So today we're looking at something that's a little bit weird. So we're looking at an application called T-Speed, which I'm guessing is supposed to be short for Terminal Speed Read. What it is, is a speed reading application. These claim to make it so you can actually read faster. Now, I'll explain how speed reading is supposed to work in just a bit, but for now, let's actually have a look at what this application actually does. So to test out the application, we need some sort of file to actually read from. So off camera, I went and downloaded basically the description of Arch Linux off of the Arch Linux wiki. So if you want to use the same text, that's what I'm using. To use Tspread, basically what we do is redirect some sort of text into it. So in this case, we're going to do Tspread, redirect, Tspread, test. And as you're going to see, it shows one word at a time. Now, you will notice a bit of flashing off to the left-hand side here, right here, as well as down the bottom. This is more of a problem with Alacrity than it is with this application. Alacrity likes to do weird things like that, but if you try it in something like Xterm or ST, you're just going to see the words flashing on the screen. Now, you'll probably notice that even though it's running at 300 words per minute, which is the default setting, it's considerably easier to read than trying to read 300 words per minute if you're reading it along a regular document. And that's partially because you're only seeing one word at a time, but there is a bit more to it as well. So if we want to go and quit out of this, what we do is press Control C. And when you do that, you're going to notice that it tells you how far in the document you're actually up to. So if you want to go and restart the document from that point, then you can go and do that. So personally, I thought that 300 words per minute was perfectly readable, but we can actually go and raise it up as well. Now, the way we do that is with the dash W option. Now, there isn't really a maximum value, but the minimum value is going to be one. So one is going to be one word per minute. Obviously, as you can see, the first word doesn't conform to that, but every single word after that point is going to take an entire minute to show. Obviously, don't try to actually use it like this because that really isn't going to be very useful. But if we set it to something like, say, 400, 400 a bit faster, but if I wasn't talking right now, you'd probably notice you're still able to read this. Now, whether you can actually understand the words that you're reading is another question entirely, because even though you can actually take in the text, there's more to reading than just understanding the letters you actually see. There is something we can do to make it a bit easier to read. Obviously not at 2 billion words per minute, but at a more reasonable speed. So if we go and enable the dash F option, this is going to enable the focus line. So what this focuses on is the pivot character. So the pivot character is the optimal recognition point for the word, where if you focus on this point, this is going to make the rest of the word easier to read. I'm not really sure on the science behind why this works, but this is a well-accepted reading technique. And if we don't like having a line, we can go and switch it over to a pointer as well. So if we keep the dash F option enabled and also pass in the dash P option, we can go and set it to point. And this is basically going to use a V and a carrot symbol to point at the character instead. It's only a minor difference and really it's just an aesthetic change. And speaking of aesthetic changes, if we don't like the color being red, we can go and change that with the dash C option. So this takes in a number that corresponds to one of the 8-bit ANSI colors. So if you notice that your color wasn't actually red, the reason why is because you don't actually have red lined up to red inside of your terminal color scheme. I've done videos on that in the past, but if we go and pass in, say, 6, this is going to represent cyan. So if the cyan color on your terminal isn't actually cyan, then that's not the color you're going to see. So if we go and, say, change this to 3, I believe that's going to be yellow instead. As you can see, it's going to be yellow. You can go find lists online about which number actually lines up to which color. This is just using the standard ordering. So up until this point, we've been using a constant words per minute. And the problem with that is that some words are going to be considerably longer than others. So obviously, they're going to take longer to read. So if we pass in the dash L option, this is going to base the words per minute off of the word length. So as we can see, give it a second. As it's jumping between the different words, the longer words are going to take considerably longer to switch to the next word, and then the shorter words are going to be there for a much shorter amount of time. Now, I don't know if this makes it easier or harder to read. Personally, I find it a little bit annoying to have this jumpy words per minute. I'd much rather have a constant words per minute that I can just consistently read. Now, I mentioned earlier that when you quit out a T-Sprit, it shows you the word that you're up to. So if you want to go and return to that point, what we do is we use the dash N option and then pass in the number for the word we want to go back to. So in this case, let's say we go to number 300 and it's going to jump us directly to that point. 
So this last option kind of defeats the purpose of the focus mode. So if you pass in the dash I option, as you're going to see, it shows you where in the presentation you're actually up to. Now, I find this to be annoying because if I know there's this number up the top here, I'm going to drift my focus up to the top. I'm, I kind of struggle to focus on this single point when I know there's something moving just out the corner of my vision. So if there's some of the options that you like and you just want to run them every single time, you can go and add them to the config file. So that's going to be located in your .config folder in a folder called tspread and in a file called tspread.rc. So if you want to go find what all of these variable names are, go check the man page for tspread. And if we scroll down just a bit, as you can see, it's going to tell you what each of the names are actually equivalent to. So WPM is equivalent to dash W, NumStar is equivalent to dash N, and it tells you exactly what sort of value it actually takes in. I just want to talk a bit about what speed reading actually is, because from my brief bit of research, I find that it seems to be a fairly contested idea. So basically the idea is that when you read along a line, you don't actually read as if you're sliding along the line. What you do is you jump between each of the words and you probably don't even notice that you're doing this, but the next time you go and read something, pay attention to what you're actually doing. And people who don't do this typically struggle with actually reading at a reasonable pace. So a basic idea to train people to read better is to actually teach them to jump to these specific points. And the point that you want to jump to is going to be the focus point. So this tool basically emphasizes this idea and helps you to do that. Now, nothing up until this point has been contested. This seems to be fairly standard in the study of reading, but when it comes to doing speed reading, there have been tests where people are reading at upwards of 700 words per minute, but the problem that you have there is they can only do it in really short bursts. Now, the people in these tests were still able to comprehend what they were reading, but when you are reading in a way like this, if you actually do up your speed way too quickly, you are going to actually have trouble comprehending what you're reading. So I could, for example, read at 600 words per minute. After I'm done reading that though, I couldn't tell you a single thing I just read. And that's one of the big problems with trying to do speed reading. If you're not comprehending what you're actually reading, there's not really any point to actually up your reading speed. But then you also have anecdotal evidence of people saying that speed reading has massively improved their reading speed and massively improved their reading comprehension. So my suggestion is try out a tool like this and see if you actually like it. I can't say that the results that I found are going to be the same for everyone else because everyone thinks in a slightly different way. So just try it out and see what you think. Now there are some nice additions I would like to see added into this application. So one of those is there's no way to actually pause. So if I was going to say cough or sneeze or do anything where I'm going to lose focus on what I'm actually reading, I would like a way to just pause it for a moment, do whatever I need to do, and then get back into reading. Right now, the only way to do that is to quit out of the application when you're going to do something like that and then restart it from that point, which isn't really that big of a deal, but it is a just slight annoyance that I don't really want to have to deal with. The other thing I would like is to be able to step forwards and step backwards in the presentation because sometimes you might miss a word, but you don't really want to restart the entire presentation or restart from that word. Sometimes it might be easier just to have a button on the screen or something mapped on your keyboard where I can say, okay, I just want to jump back a couple of words or something like that and then just reread what was there. Now you could always just skip over that word and forget about it, but it might actually be something critical to understanding what you're trying to read. So generally reading everything is going to be the better solution. If you want to try this out for yourself, it's just a shell script. So go and download it from the GitHub page and that's basically all you need to do. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Kobinian, Andre, Nathan, Monster, Chico Bento, Joseph, uh, Mitchell, Peter the Road, Tony, and all of the $2 patrons. If you want to go and support my work, them links down below to my subscribe star, Libre Pay, Patreon, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Library, Odyssey, and BitChute if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.